I know that many of you have your little heart set on Daniel Bryan winning the 2015 Royal Rumble, and that no matter what I say to try and convince you otherwise, you're convinced that that will be the best decision and the best thing for the company and the best thing for you, and so be it. I'll be damned to tell you otherwise, so there's really no point in even trying anymore. I've already tried to enough, so, so be it. Uh, Part of the problem, again, is is that the WWE hasn't done a good enough job of getting somebody ready for this spot and for this moment to where, frankly, you would even consider Daniel Bryan having to be the best and safest option to win the 2015 Royal Rumble. Shame on the WWE for that. Not shame on you for wanting Daniel Bryan to win the Rumble, being honest here. But my question is, why can't Ryback win the Royal Rumble? It's a simple question. Here's a guy... That was rocket shipped in 2012. They put it straight up his ass and they were pushing him to the very top of the card. And then they kind of lost their way. They didn't go all the way with him when the opportunity was there to go all the way with him. They kind of backed off of him a little bit after that. They had him lose at WrestleMania 29. Then they turned him heel because they were idiotic. Then they aligned him with Paul Heyman because they were even more idiotic. And then they buried the guy and then he didn't matter. Well, now the WWE actually has a second chance here, which is often something that they don't get, to get it right and make a big star out of somebody. And I'm thinking of Ryback. You know, I realize at this point in time that part of the reason that many of you want Daniel Bryan to win the 2015 Royal Rumble is because you really don't see another compelling, appealing option out there. And you most especially don't view Roman Reigns as that compelling, intriguing option. I get that kind of understand and kind of agree, don't fully understand and agree, you think he's not ready, to which I might counter, when is a guy ever ready? And frankly, when is anybody in the WWE going to be ready to make that ascension up the card, if we're being perfectly honest? But I look at Ryback here, and here is a guy that has a lot of things going in his category. He's got a unique look for him. Check. He has a character that has something that you can latch on to, whether or not you'd necessarily like it or not. Check. He has the ability to get the crowd engaged in him and get them involved in what he's doing and invested in what he's doing. Check. He has the ability, potentially, to sell a lot of merchandise if he's a top star. Check. He has a simple to understand and a simple to repeat catchphrase that can help get him even more over with the WWE Universe. Check. He's somebody that's not John Cena, Randy Orton, or Triple H. Check. He's somebody that could use the spotlight and the opportunity afforded being a Royal Rumble winner. Check. He would be somebody that you could, if you presented it right, send at a Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 31, and some may actually buy that he was a legitimate, credible threat. Check. You could argue that he's more ready for that spot than a Roman Reigns. Check. You could argue that some of the momentum is there for him, at least in some part, uh, before the WWE decided to do an on-air firing of him on Raw this week. Check. There's a lot of appeal there to Ryback, and I understand that he's not going to be everybody's flavor or cup of tea. And I understand for some of you that you've had, again, no option, no other choice, but to take the in-ring component as the most important thing and the most serious thing um, and the only thing that really matters, because what else do you really have when it comes to today's product? And I understand that some of you maybe didn't grow up in a time where the bigger and larger-than-life guys were the guys that were the biggest stars, and... Those guys tended to be the biggest stars for the reason because they drew the most money and the time where those guys were at the top is when the business and specifically the WWF, WWE did draw the most money. Understand that. And I understand some of you will make the argument that there is evolution, that is change in the business. Well, just because they're changed, that doesn't necessarily mean it's good change. But there is change nonetheless. However, with that said, I think everybody can agree that we need new blood at the top. We need new top stars in the WWE from our own fan standpoint, the product standpoint, and frankly from the WWE's bottom line business standpoint. The more young stars that can be created, the more young stars that can become that type of guy, the less likely it is for the WWE to have to so incessantly, insistently insist upon John Cena getting that spot no matter what and always being forced down their throats.
You know, variety is the spice of life, and I firmly believe that we need all types of wrestlers, all shapes, all sizes, all types of looks, all types of physiques, all types of in-ring styles, all types of characters in order for the product to work, in order for the product to be better. It allows everybody to stand out more. What you have now is a lot of the same. Everybody's packaged, featured, presented the same. Frankly, a lot of the guys kind of look the same. They act the same. They walk the same. They talk the same. They wrestle the same. And everything's kind of the same across the board. And it's hard for anybody to stand out. It's hard for anything to really stand up. And the product suffers as a result. I look here at a Ryback, and I see a guy that can get over with the ladies, that can get over with the kids when he's a good guy. And has a, the ability to relate to enough of the hardcore segment of audience from the standpoint of maybe A, that he's not Roman Reigns, uh, B, the fact that this is a guy that actually did get rocket shipped at one point in time, but people could see the ball being dropped with him, the opportunity lost with him, and see a guy that has had to pay his dues over the years that's waited a very long time to get to this opportunity, to get to this moment, and they see a guy that is something different and see a guy that they can maybe to a certain degree latch onto and buy into and believe in. Look, Ryback's never going to be a maestro of the ring. Let's just get that shit out of the way right now. He's never going to flip and kick his way into your freaking hearts. If he has to get to the point where he's trying to high spot a bunch to get in your hearts, there's a problem here on several different levels. But what he can be is he can be a top guy that can work with some of those guys and get more out of those guys and help better spotlight and showcase those type of guys. He's also the type of guy with the type of character that he has, the type of gimmick that he has, the type of shtick that he has, with the type of look that he has, that could work really well on the babyface side. A babyface side in the WWE that really truly lacks those young, impressive kind of monsters that you can take seriously. A guy like Ryback is a guy that you can take seriously. So I ask you, what would be so bad about Ryback winning the 2015 Royal Rumble? Why would that be such a bad thing? Why would Daniel Bryan or anybody else be so much of a better option than a Ryback? Here's a guy that's gotten close but got it yanked out from under him. You guys can relate to that because a lot of your favorites have been in that position at one point in time, as have mine. Here's a guy that has a different type of look for the WWE, granted a more traditional look, but also the type of traditional look that you know would allow the WWE to have more faith and more confidence with them once they put them in that spot so they'd be more likely to stick with them and that would take them a little bit farther away from the Cena and the Orton and Triple H push all the time that we've grown tired of over the past several freaking years. He's gotten himself over. He's gotten himself over even more. He works really well as a babyface. He has a simple to say, a simple to understand, a simple to get behind catchphrase. He can move some merchandise. If given the opportunity, I assure you, here is a guy that can work. Here is a guy that can still be a big star for the WWE and has a good story to tell. This is a guy that a couple of years ago, mind you, a lot of you were upset about when he was the last one eliminated and it was John Cena that won the 2013 Royal Rumble. Now, because it's not Cena in that potential spot and you're looking at potentially the opportunity to see a Daniel Bryan win the Royal Rumble, you'd be incredibly upset and pissed off if a Ryback won the Rumble. That's a spot that should this year in particular be reserved to get somebody new over, to give spotlight to a newer guy or a new guy. Give somebody that push. Give somebody that rub. Give somebody that bump up to the next level. And while Ryback has been around for a couple of years, I will grant you, he is a guy that deserves that push, in my opinion. He is a guy that deserves that spot, in my opinion. He is a guy that all parties involved could benefit greatly from if he was spotlighted in that way and given that rub. And you'll be damned to be able to convince me otherwise. I just don't see why Ryback would be such a bad option to win the 2015 Royal Rumble. You know, and I look at it and I say, damn it all, at this point in time, just about anybody new or fresh, if the right reason was given and the right execution was done afterwards, could work. Because this company needs something different. They need something fresh. And I hear the crowd. And I sense the crowd really getting behind him. He's not Roman Reigns. You could definitely argue he's more ready than Roman Reigns if anybody is ready. And he's most certainly somebody that would get a spot that he hasn't gotten before, unlike a Daniel Bryan, who already got that spot last fucking year. 
Personally, I think he's more ready for that spot than even a Dean Ambrose is. He has a little bit more me more momentum until, of course, they fired him on air this week because they're stupid. I mean, you look at Ryback, and to me, he screams Royal Rumble winner. You could have him wrestle John Cena at WrestleMania. You could have him wrestle Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. You could come up with a storyline where he would be able to wrestle Seth Rollins for the title at WrestleMania. There's all types of different possibilities. I'm not saying that he has to be the guy or that he should be the guy or that he's so much of a better candidate than everybody else because as I have referenced before, I'm not sure that there is that guy this year. And I'm not sure that any option is really that much better than all the rest. I just don't understand why so many people don't like Ryback, and I just don't understand why so many people think that somebody like a Daniel Bryan is so superior of an option to somebody like a Ryback. I just don't get it. 